after studying this module you shall be able to know about diversification direction of diversification related and unrelated diversification learn about the economic aspects of diversification evaluate benefits and costs of diversification and also analyze the impact of diversification on firm performance analysis of the firm using microeconomic theory typically considers a firm to be a single product single plant firm catering to the demand of a single market however in practice this may not always be true as there are many firms that produce a range of products and serve a number of markets these companies are described as diversified or as conglomerates when a single product firm gets converted into a multi product firm diversification is said to have occurred firms may either get diversified by getting involved in products that are related to the initial activity or they may get into products that are unrelated to examining the economic and strategic motive of diversification it becomes necessary to understand the direction and types of diversification firms activities economic advantage and performance of the diversified firms diversification direction of diversification diversification of the firms takes place in two possible ways it may take place by initiating or acquiring new activities which could be either related or unrelated to the firm's existing activities the other possible way is expanding the market for the existing product in new geographical areas this has been illustrated in figure 1 the initial position of the firm is in box a that is its existing product market and box e its existing geographical market under this condition firms grow depending on the general growth of the existing market and the ability of the firm to outperform its competitors it may achieve this through making changes in the product or by focusing on the promotional effort and advertising however when the market matures growth of the undiversified firms fail to sustain and reaches its end unless it is capable of increasing its share in the existing stationary market firms can overcome this problem by opting for diversification the direction of the diversification can be more than one as shown in figure 1 there can be four possible directions of diversification firms can move from box a to box d h b and f direction of diversification from box a to box d and h implies movement from supplying existing product in the existing market that is box a to supplying new product in new market that is box d 
एंड न्यू प्रोडक्ट इन न्यू जोग्राफिकल मार्केट दैट इज बॉक्स एच वेर एज द अदर पॉसिबिलिटीज इन्वॉल्व द फर्म सप्लाइंग द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोडक्ट एंड सर्विसेस दैट इज बॉक्स ए टू न्यू प्रोडक्ट मार्केट दैट इज बॉक्स बी और टू न्यू जोग्राफिकल एरिया दैट इज बॉक्स एफ द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ डाइवर्सिफिकेशन इन्वॉल्विंग सप्लाइंग द एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोडक्ट टू न्यू मार्केट और न्यू जोग्राफिकल एरिया कैन बी सीन इन केस ऑफ फिजी ड्रिंक produced by iron brew which was marketed in glasgow towards the end of the 19th century in scotland at present it is a market leader in case of fizzy drinks outselling colas company decision to go for diversification involving new geographical market proved very fruitful geographical diversification was brought about by selling the drink in the larger markets of england and wales where it has a 3% market share the firms can also go for alternative form of diversification which may involve producing new product and selling it to the existing geographical market however such diversification may not always result in positive outcome for the firms in case of the firm going for such diversification they need to identify the requirement of new product and take measure for developing the new product this requires investment in both product and market development facilities and in research and development facilities such efforts by the firms run a risk of high levels of uncertainty related to development of product that could sustain growth of the firm and severe competition from the imitators with superior and cheaper products for example in uk early innovators like sinclair with its spectrum computers and amstrad instrumental in popularizing pc did not survive as they failed to keep up with the pace of technological change in the home pc market related and unrelated diversification when the firms diversify they become conglomerates producing a range of products catering to the needs of a range of market the diversification can be related or unrelated in case of related diversification some resources are jointly used for the production of number of products such as plastic molding machinery may be used to make plastic furniture and watering cans while sometime the related diversification may take place through sharing of the same marketing and management system although the product may not be sharing the same production technology and assets for example fizzy soft drinks and chocolates do not use same production technology or the assets but they do have similar marketing and distribution requirements the managerial setup can function for multiple products this can be seen in case of cadbury which diversified from chocolates to soft drinks to become cadbury schweppes the unrelated diversification 
does not involve any kind of overlap in terms of sharing of the common managerial competence or asset requirement. Thus, a company making vegetable oil and ceramic tiles does not have any kind of overlap in the production technique or the market. Companies engaged in unrelated diversification are further subdivided into managerial enterprises and financial or the holding companies. In managerial enterprises, a managerial team is responsible for providing general services to all the operating divisions within the economy and take decisions on addition and deletion of activities or product from firm's portfolio. In case of financial or the holding companies, the relationship between the core and the individual divisions of the company is purely financial with no managerial interaction between them. Diversified firms and portfolio of activities. Diversified firms, portfolio of activities. A diversified firm produces at least two or more products, each having a particular strength and weaknesses and makes varying contribution to profitability of the firm. Thus, the overall contribution of the portfolio of the products on the firm's performance needs to be determined using SWOT, that is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threat analysis. The SWOT analysis involves assessing the existing products in terms of attractiveness as compared to the competing products and market in terms of demand, size and growth rate, the price and income elasticities of demand, the product's life cycle, supply structure, firm's size relative to its rivals and availability of economies of scale. It also requires the firms to assess the competitive strengths of competitors in each market segment or for each product. The assessment can be done using a matrix to locate its position in each market relative to its rival. Table 1 shows the potential growth for each market and the competitive strength of the company. Firms lying in box 9 are the ones with strongest competitive strength and with the fastest growing market, while the ones lying in box 1 have weakest competitive strength and the market is growing slowly. Thus, firms should concentrate resources in box 9 products and try and avoid box 1. Boxes 3 and 6 show high growth sectors with firms that are not very competitive. Here, the decision to continue mobilizing the resources in the existing products or to move them to the alternative uses depends on whether or not the firm decides to attain strong competitive position in the market. In case of low growth sector represented by boxes 1, 4 and 7, firms should continue to stay in low growth market that is box 7 where the firm is strongly competitive 
but may try and avoid box 1 and 4. In general, the medium competitive positions do provide option to check if the position can be improved whereas weak competitive positions indicates withdrawal. Thus, the withdrawal of resources from the weakly competitive sectors may generate push factors to either reutilize them in growing from medium to strong competitive sector or to use them in activities to replace weak competitive activities. Products in box 9 makes greater net profit contribution per unit sold as compared to the products in box 1. Activities in box 1 to 6 will make lesser contribution compared to activities in box 7 and 8. In a static framework, firm should provide resources as long as the marginal unit contribution from each product is same. Whereas in dynamic model company is supposed to make investment now for the future benefits based on the net present value of future profit flows. Taking uncertainty into account, the firm should attempt to equalize the present expected value of the future flows from each product. However, in dynamic model, it is difficult to estimate marginal return in any given period. For example, activities in box 9 require investment of resources because of high growth rate, while in box 7, above average return may be produced due to strong competitive position even without making any investment. Economic aspects of diversification. The driving force behind the diversification of the firm lies in the threat to the profitability. The firms consider diversifying only when the firms fail to meet its primary objective with respect to growth and profit using the existing product. There can be number of push and pull factors that act as a driving force for firms to take decision in favor of diversification. The push factor that arises from existing position of the firm includes the limited size of the existing market. The existence of underutilized assets that might be used to produce new products or manage new activities and surplus investment resources that could be used to finance new activities. While the pull factors or the incentives that pulls the manager towards diversification include the greater rewards in terms of profitability arising from investment in new market opportunities than continuing investments in the existing activities. Greater the potential for profit in the new activities, greater will be the pull for diversification. However, the diversification comes with high levels of uncertainty attached to it as compared to the more certain and limited return in case of existing activities. Thus, diversification can be considered as high risk strategy as it involves new product, new markets and the commitment of the managerial and financial resources for uncertain returns. The different economic aspects 
of diversification are being dealt in the following subsection synergies when two activities are carried out under a single management it generates greater revenue or lower cost this is due to synergy which is defined as a sum of the whole being greater than the sum of its part the synergies arise from the increased utilization of assets that are currently used partially and cost sharing between a number of activities these assets includes physical machinery buildings and land human capital in the form of skilled managers and workers this may also include intangible assets like embedded knowledge research and development skills and brand names these sources of synergy are termed as economies of scope it is based on the nature of production function which enables cheaper production of two or more products together than separately single product firms fail to derive the benefits diversification can take place through merger and acquisitions and internal growth economies of scope arises in case of diversification through merger and acquisition as it results in sharing of the fixed factor associated with production and also enables them to cut down the redundant costs not all the diversification strategies lead to economies of scope large firms take the advantage of economies of size which enables them to lower the cost of inputs borrow money or market products that are unavailable to smaller firms the extent of low cost inputs depends on the nature of relationship between different activities of the firm the market benefits are achieved if the same method is used in different activities while lower management cost is achieved through organizational efficiency which is enabled by size of the firm if the synergy gain is not achieved there will not be any advantage in having the product produced by a diversified firm with respect to the same product being produced by a single firm low unit cost and increased capital productivity can be achieved if the firm makes a better use of existing assets and competences the firms can make greater use of indivisible plant and equipment by producing new products in addition to the existing ones use of the distribution and logistic systems can be put to greater use by distributing the related goods to the same outlets based on the accumulated knowledge and expertise of particular market and consumers firms can make better utilization of the marketing department to promote the new product through advertising firms can make use of the goodwill developed for its existing brands to sell its new product they can use the earnings from the current activities as investment in new activities further the expertise of the managers can be extended to the whole range of activities in case their expertise is sector specific it may not be of greater value if used 
outside the context of the firm. Such resources are more valuable if used within the firm than in isolation. Risk reduction. Firms engaged in single product and cater to single market are vulnerable to the cyclical variations in demand and input costs. The fluctuations in these two has direct implication on the revenue and costs and hence profits of the firm as well as the profits that are in secular decline. Diversification provides a way to reduce the variation or the dispersion and offset the decline in profits. Acquisition of the products whose sale follows a cycle opposite to the existing product cycle can be used to offset the cyclical variations while acquiring the products with long term growth can offset the secular decline in the profits. Diversification allows the firm to spread the risk by offering them immunity to certain extent against unexpected changes in any market for any one product. Impact of any market shock will be more on a specialist firm as compared to a diversified firm. For example, the specialist airlines suffered more losses after 9-11 incident as compared to airlines owned by companies which have diverse operations in addition to airline division. Even flow of revenue can be achieved if a firm is diversified and deals with two products having counter cyclical sales pattern. The counter cyclical sales pattern may arise due to completely opposite sales cycles of the two products or the two may have different peaks with sales cycle of one lagging behind the other. Fluctuations in sale can also be offset by shifting to new geographical markets having different sales cycle. For example, firms in UK are able to reduce the fluctuations by registering their presence both in UK as well as continental Europe. The two regions follow a different sales time path and have peaks at different time. Seasonal variations in sales can be overcome, opting to diversify with products whose peak sales are in different season. Decline in sales of a product in long term can be overcome if the firm decides to have a portfolio of products at different stages of their life cycle. This spreads the risk to different stages and eliminates the chance of bankruptcy in case of a failure of one product or one market. Financial aspects. Diversification gives the firm a cost of capital advantage with respect to the non-diversified firms by limiting variability in the profits. This enables the firms to limit variations in dividend payments to the shareholder. Stability in profit gives the firm an edge over the firms with variability in profit as it can raise equity capital and loans on more advantageous terms. More stable the profit and subsequent dividend flow allow the firm to manage greater share of their finance through debt capital as compared to the equity capital. The stability reduces the risk of 
non payment of interest to the debt holders the benefit of debt capital is that it provides the firm tax tax advantages as interest payment is considered as cost and not a share of profit it also reduces the risk of non payment of dividends to the shareholders firms which are substantially larger utilize the internal fund generated from activity to invest in another activity this reduces the dependency on external resources for borrowing the funds potential lenders find spending on diversifying very risky and are often reluctant in funding the activity diversified firms are better equipped to finance their own expansion in this case internal capital markets are more efficient than the external capital markets however such decision must be su supplemented with consideration of the opportunity cost and internal funds diversification and growth diversification can be considered as one of the important strategies that the firms adopt for growth it promotes growth of assets sales and products in addition to reduction of risks growth oriented firms will always have a tendency to break free from the constraints of slow growing markets this acts as a push factor which would be very strong in case firms have greater market share and when the sales is a major contributor of slow growing markets firms may find very difficult to increase sales and acquire competitors under such situation they tend to move to other geographical areas when a product is at early stage of product life cycle in one market and at a late stage in another firms willingness to grow encourages them to acquire other companies with a portfolio of successful products in case they do not have their own portfolio of potentially successful products diversifying in the other geographical market for growth has been best seen in case of hong kong and shanghai bank in the wake of political uncertainty due to the merger of territory back to china in 2000 the bank decided to diversify into other geographical markets in pursuit of a sustained growth it went on to acquire midland bank one of the four major english banks other example includes moving of prudential insurance company into banking sector by establishing egg and internet based bank transaction costs diversification can be considered efficient only in case where the gain from the utilization of unused resources exceeds the gain from selling the use of resources to third parties grant argues that the firm can derive competitive advantage from diversification through economies of scope in common resource and presence of transaction costs that discourage the selling or renting of resources to other firms further trees in 1982 argues that transaction cost is substantial when intangible assets like brand names and technical knowledge are involved knowledge more unique to the firm 
is less valuable outside the firm. When the firm decides to produce two products, they have the option of either producing the two within the firm or enter into a contract with two separate firms producing the two products. The contractual arrangement may cost more or may be less than the joint production within the firm. In case the costs are the same for both the arrangements, the firm decision depends on comparison of the cost of governance and transaction cost. Firms opt for diversification if the transaction costs of contracts are more than the cost of governance. The firm should always look for alternative to sell the surplus resource to outside users and must identify the core activities of the diversified firm market power. Diversification enables the firm to increase its market share in a single market. It does not add to its market power. The major advantage of diversification is that it increases the ability of the firm to adopt anti-competitive strategies. They are able to do so as they have the facility of using the profits from one activity to finance the other activities. Hill in 1985 attributed this to the accessibility of the firms to conglomerate power derived from the sum of their market power in individual markets. Another aspect of diversification is that the firms might engage in predatory pricing driving away the competitors from the market. Although by cutting the price, the firm may not be able to recover the full cost in the short run. However, they might be successful in increasing their customer base and force the single market competitor out of the market. The same strategy of cross subsidization is also applicable to other forms of competitions like advertising and product enhancement. For example, News International, a diversified media group, used selective price cuts in UK newspaper market. Despite being described as predatory price, it was not found to be anti-competitive by the competition authorities. The predatory pricing does not follow the resource allocation rules of diversification and thus it may not be a preferred strategy as compared to other managerial efforts. Benefits and costs of diversification. Firms derive benefit from diversification in the form of cost advantage for a given range of output and revenue gains. Hence, it becomes essential for firms to determine the degree of diversification or the extent to which the managerial decision should support diversification. The main objective should be to determine the optimal degree of diversification by combining the cost advantages and disadvantages such that it maximizes the profits or managerial utility function. It has been observed that the initial cost saving due to diversification no longer persists later on and lead to increased costs later on particularly when the firm indulges in activities which are far from its core activities and as the firm grows in size. Firm's decision to increase the number of products produced with a subsequent increase in the number of markets served and if they are unrelated 
to the core activity of the firm have negative effects on the synergy gains as they add more to the managerial costs. Relationship between diversification and profitability can be of four types. Profitability may increase, decrease, increase initially and at some point of time may start decreasing. Decrease initially and start increasing after some time. Grant et al. and Markites inferred from their studies that an inverted U-shaped relationship exists between profit and diversification. Figure 1 shows the relationship between the two. With increasing diversification, the profits declines. Thus, it shows that extending diversification too far leads to increasing costs and dwindling profit. This is mainly because as the firms become more diversified, it becomes more complex and the managerial and administrative cost increases leading to information distortion and loss of control. The managerial team will be less efficient in handling the new activities further away from the original activities of the firm. For example, techniques for managing a power plant may not be appropriate for managing a supermarket. Management costs increases and the management becomes less effective as the organizational structure becomes less efficient. Loss of benefits of synergy also adds up to the cost. Figure 2 depicts the degree of diversification which shows that where the marginal benefit of diversification decreases, the marginal costs increases. The optimal level where the marginal benefits equal marginal cost of diversification is represented by OD. Thus, for a firm to diversify beyond OD is not recommended as the cost would be more than the benefit. Another major issue that arises with diversification is that it leads to decline its valuation ratio as the shareholders tend to sell rather than buy the shares. This is mainly because of the difficulty faced by the shareholder and financial market in valuing the firm due to their diverse activity. Lack of faith in internal capital markets and absence of appropriate valuation technique for diverse firms. Such situation may create pressure on the management to decide in favor of splitting their business. For example, the Kingfisher in year 2000 succumbed to such pressure and split its Woolworth variety store business from its DIY and electrical businesses. Impact of diversification on firm performance. Studies determining the impact of diversification on firm performance have been broadly studied at two levels. The first set of study makes an effort to study the impact of diversification on individual enterprises by analyzing the progress of diversification and profits. The second set of studies mainly focuses on measuring the relative profitability of diversified and non-diversified firms. However, the second set of studies is mostly considered inconclusive by researchers. 
This is due to the use of different methodology, difficulties in finding the suitable sample firms and insufficient data of financial variables. One of the first attempts to study the impact of diversification was made by Rumelt in 1974, who found that diversified firms did not exhibit better performance but grew at a faster rate than the less diversified or single product firms. Findings were further supported by another similar study by Lufman and Reed in 1984. Conclusive evidences of positive impact of diversification have been found in financial studies which made use of the data from stock market. Markites found a significant upward movement in share prices following announcements of refocusing by diversified enterprises. Pandya and Rao in a 1998 studied financial performance of large sample of US firms and found that in terms of returns and risks, diversified firms performed much better than undiversified firms. Returns were best for the best performing undiversified firm, but it showed a lot of variation. Studies conducted on Australian firms concluded that more focused firms have higher level of profitability as compared to diversified firms. C found that in case of the European utilities, freed by privatization and deregulation with purpose of diversification, initially generated increased profitability while the performance declined with higher degree of diversification. This is due to the full utilization of existing resources which limits the profitability of further diversification. Firms that produce a range of products and serve a number of markets are described as diversified or as conglomerates that is conversion of single product firm into a multi product firm is known as diversification. Diversification takes place in two ways. One, by initiating or acquiring new activities which could be either related or unrelated to the firm's existing activities. Two, by expanding the market for the existing product in new geographical areas. Diversification is related if some resources are jointly used for the production of number of products and unrelated if it does not involve any kind of overlap in terms of sharing of the common managerial competence or asset requirement. The firms consider diversifying only when the firms fail to meet its prime objective with respect to growth and profit using the existing product. Extending diversification too far leads to increasing cost and dwindling profit. As the firms become more diversified, it becomes more complex and the managerial and administrative cost increases leading to information distortion and loss of control. Empirical studies mostly inconclusive in determining success of diversification. The findings can be summed up in the phrase diversify with 
care.